Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, I will show you how the new Android 12 splash screen API works to make a very cool splash screen. You can see if we open this app here on Android 12, I have my favorite icon in Android Studio here as a splash screen icon. And after three seconds, we are actually navigated to our actual screen. And the cool thing is in these three seconds, you can even do some processing stuff and you that's just a custom amount of time. You can you can make a network call to maybe check if the user is still logged in, all that cool stuff, and then afterwards navigate the user to your actual screen without actually needing any type of extra activity for that. And what's even better, I said Android 12 introduced this API, but it even has a compatibility API. So we can even make this stuff work on previous Android versions. And that's what I also We'll show you in this video how you can basically now make splash screens in Android. What's the preferred way? You can even make this animated if you want. Like, it's very cool. I really like this new API. Let's actually jump right into it. And the only thing you need is one dependency. This one here. So make sure to include that in your project. You can also get this from my GitHub repository down below. This dependency is not needed for Android 12. So Android 12 already contains that logic to handle and implement the splash screen. However, if you want to also support other Android versions like 11, 10 and downwards, which you usually want, then you also want to include this dependency and then you're ready to go. The next step would be to choose an icon you want to show in your splash screen, which is typically, typically your logo. I don't have your logo, so I will just create a new drawable icon here in my drawable folder, new vector asset, and then we can click here and I will choose, as I said, my favorite icon, which is the baby changing station. Let's import that. I will make it green. Choose whatever icon you like. We can click next, finish. And there we go. So as I said, you can choose any type of drawable you want and it will show up on your splash screen. And if you want to have an animated drawable, then you need to create that as an animated vector drawable. And that will also be compatible with the new splash screen API. So how will this work? Um, maybe you know my previous video, which I uploaded like a year ago or so, about how you should make splash screens on Android when we didn't have this splash screen API. And that was basically in your theme. If we open that, there was a property called window um, window background, this one. That's basically what shows up before your activity is launched. So if you open your app and you don't have any type of splash screen, then there will just be a blank white screen for like a second or so, and then your activity actually shows its UI. With this window background property, we could change what appears on this blank screen. However, it wasn't really meant to be made for splash screens. We could use it for that, but it didn't really support it well. So we couldn't decide where to place the icon. Um, it was kind of often kind of messed up with the icon. So now we have a better way. And that is actually these splash screen, like icon background color, animated icon, splash screen background. So we now have new properties that we can actually choose. You can see here these Android ones even have a branding image. So all these properties that start with Android are only for Android 12. So if you want this branding image, uh, I don't think this, this compatibility library supports that, but that's just something that would display at the bottom of your splash screen, which the official docs don't recommend anyways, in terms of styling guidelines. However, what we are going to do is we're not going to put this here in our theme. Instead, we will create a new theme. So in our values folder, we create a new values resource file. Now we'll call this splash. So in this splash screen resource file, we're going to define our very own style, which is only applied for our splash screen, because that's in the end what we want. So what we will do is we will say the name is theme.app.starting because it's our starting theme and the parent of that will be theme.splash screen. So that will be the parent, uh, the parent theme. And in here we can now customize this theme. We can add an item and we can say uh, window 
splash screen background to set a background color for our splash screen, which I will choose a dark gray here. Um, you could, of course, choose color resources for that, which I'm too lazy here for. And the next step would be to have another items block to have the window splash screen animated icon. So even if you don't have an animated icon, you, you have to choose this property. If you have one, as I said, it will still support it. The icon we will choose is, in my case, the baby changing station. Yay. And I think one more. Um, and that is window splash screen animation duration. So if you have an animation, then this is how you could choose the duration of that animation. I don't have that here, so I will leave it away. This icon background color never really worked for me, to be honest, on lower devices. That only worked for me when I did that for Android 12 only. That is basically that the circle around your icon also has a specific color. But you could still achieve that by just adding the circle to your vector drawable. So I will leave that away. One thing we actually need, one more thing, is post splash screen theme. And that's a very cool property now, because that now defines a different theme that the app will switch to after the splash screen has been shown. So that's really cool, because we don't want to apply this theme to our app after the splash screen is actually over. So now we can actually choose our main app theme, which is this one. So we can choose a theme that uh, splash screen Android 12. That's just how my project was called. You, of course, choose your project name here. And that's already it for this theme. If you want to support dark mode here, like having a different splash screen for dark mode, then you can, of course, just create a different variant here of your splash XML. So then you would go to values, a new values resource file. You would say, okay, that's also called splash. But this time you actually say UI mode or actually night mode. And you say, okay, I, I want to generate this splash screen file just for night mode. And then it will apply that correspondingly. I won't do that here. But what I will do is I will hop into our manifest. And we want to now change our initial theme that our app will apply at boot up. And we want to change that to theme app starting. So to our splash screen theme. I want to do the same for the activity. So theme.app starting. And only one more thing to make this work is in our activity. Here, this is a Jetpack Compose project, which really doesn't matter. I will just display a very simple Hello World text here. It works the same on XML projects. So modify a fill max size and let's center the content and just display text Hello World. Now, before set content on XML, it would be before set content view. We want to say install splash screen. So that comes from the dependency that we used. You can see that gives us a splash screen, which we can now use and modify. So we can say that apply. And here it gives us access to this splash screen. And there are now two cool properties here, or two cool functions rather that we can use. On the one hand, set key visible condition. That's a really cool thing now, because that allows us to fetch data during the splash screen or to do any kind of processing and to basically keep this active. So what I will do is I will actually create a very simple view model, because that's what you usually would use to detect if your splash screen should actually still show or not. So let's have a main view model. Make that a view model. Won't contain a lot of stuff here. Just a very simple state flow, maybe. Like private valve is loading, mutable state flow. Initially, we are actually loading, so we set this to true. We create a public version of that, which is, is loading as state flow. And then in the init block, we just simulate some kind of delay. So we say, your model scope dot launch. And we want to say, okay, when we launch the app, we delay this for three seconds. So this could be where you actually synchronize your data, where you fetch new data from the network. 
And then after that delay, we say, okay, is loading is now false. And as soon as this is false, we actually want to hide our splash screen. So how can we now do this? Once you go to activity, actually make sure we have an instance of this view model. So private val view model, type main view model by view models. And then since we now have this condition here, we can say set keep visible condition, which I think we can do it like this. And then we can say view model is loading value. So this now takes a Boolean here. And as long as this Boolean is true, it will actually keep this, the splash screen visible. So as long as we are loading here in this case, our splash screen will show up. So this function is basically running in some kind of loop, like on every pre-draw actually, it is triggered. So that's why we don't need some kind of observer here, that it will just call this quite often and check if this condition changed. And if it changed, it will simply hide our splash screen. On the other hand, you have a function here, which is the on exit animation listener, which is pretty self-explanatory. So that will just be fired off if you have an animation and that animation actually finished, which is also often very helpful because in that case, you can then hide the splash screen according to that. But that is actually everything we need to do to make this splash screen work on pretty much all Android versions, like at least down to 26 or so I tested it, but should also work down to 21. So let's launch this on my Pixel device. I will check this here and let's see how this works. You can see we get a dark gray background here and after that it shows up with our hello world text. So why didn't I why didn't it really show our icon our baby changing station? I don't know. <laughs> it, it's probably a bug here or yeah, at least always if I launch this directly from Android Studio, the icon never shows up, but uh, if we if we actually close the app here and reopen this um, here, then you can see our icon shows up, which is scaled up way too much. I will show you how you can fix that. And now that will be the case every time we actually relaunch the app. So I don't know why it doesn't work that way if we launch it from Android Studio, because it does apply that theme. Otherwise, the the background wouldn't be dark gray. And you can also see that after three seconds, we're actually navigated to our main screen. Well, let's see how we can fix that this icon is actually too large. And this can sometimes be a little bit tricky to make these icons fit well. For that, we need to jump into our baby changing station drawable. And here you can see we have a path. And we also have this viewport of 24, which is important. We basically want to put this path in a so-called group and we can then scale down this entire group. So we want to say the pivot, pivot X is 12, which is the middle of our viewport width. And the pivot Y is also 12, which is the middle of our viewport height. And then we can say, okay, the scale X is just 50% and the scale Y is also 50%. We can open this group, put in this path, one with that, we launch that on our device. Check this here, and now it will again not show up. But if we relaunch this and open this here, you can see now it actually fits pretty well. Um, yeah, Android just takes a little circle here and crops everything that is out of the circle, which is a little bit sad, but uh, yeah. I guess that's how they want it to happen. You can still fix this by just scaling down your vectors and that's how it will look pretty nice. And if you actually don't yet know how you can probably make network calls and fetch that data properly, so you have such states that you can actually observe on with your splash screen to hide it, then I can really recommend you this video about flows and it's actually a playlist. So yeah, after that, you will know that topic pretty well.